Alrighty, wild card weekend officially in the books. The Buccaneers, just as we speak, just finished off kicking the shit out of the Eagles for the last three hours. We'll touch on both games from Monday. Let's start with that ass whooping in Tampa Bay first. First and foremost, Nick Sirianni is getting fired. There is no case you could make as to why he should be back on the Eagles sideline in 2024. I mean, I'm struggling right now, seconds after the game just ended, to make the case for him to go back home on the team plane. Like, if I'm Jeffrey Lurie, I'm saying, beat it. Find your own way home. After I had to watch that embarrassment of a product on the field on a nationally televised playoff game for the last three hours, you think I'm going to let you fly on my plane home? No way, buddy. I would do what USC did to Lane Kiffin. Fire him right on the tarmac right there and have him find his own way back to Philly. That was an embarrassment. And there is no way, despite making the playoffs the last three years and obviously going to the Super Bowl last year, um, there is no argument to make for Nick Sirianni coming back for a fourth year. He has lost control of the locker room. There is no belief in him or the guys he's hired. There is no case to make for Sirianni coming back to the Eagles in 2024. He is a CEO caliber head coach, right? He's someone who's not an offensive play caller. He's not a defensive play caller. He comes from the offensive side of the football. But again, he's not calling the plays. That's not his forte. He oversees everything. So when you're a CEO type head coach, I think you have three responsibilities that you would bare minimum have to execute each and every week, but each and every season. That is have your guys ready to play, have them play fundamentally sound football and have them motivated. Those three things, that's it. And you watch the last two months, but even if you forget the last two months, watch the last three hours. Sirianni has swung and missed big time in all three of those areas. 0-4-3. That was, I mean, the Eagles look like I, honestly, if you just drive me in a time portal and said, watch this game, Ryan, I would have thought it was a preseason game. The Eagles were out there going through the motions, looking lifeless, not prepared for the opponent whatsoever. I mean, did you have no idea that Todd Bowles was going to blitz you like every single play? Eagles look shocked anytime a blitz came. That's on coaching. They looked ill-prepared. They took this game like it was August 30th, not January in, a, in the postseason with your season on the line. That's coaching. That first and foremost is coaching. And so when you are a CEO, when you can't rely on, well, he's a great play caller or he's a tremendous game planner. What is the reason when you watch what you saw on Monday night and you watch how the Eagles started 10-1 and and just had the wheels fall off? What's the argument to bring Sirianni back? What does he do well that says, I need Nick on my sidelines in 2024? I'll wait. But if I wait, I'll be here all night. Because there's not one thing Sirianni does well that has you saying, we need him on our team in 2024. That's why he's got to go. That's why he's got to be fired. Also, as a CEO, you got to nail your coordinator hires. And he went 0 for 2. 0 for 2. Shane Steichen, who, I mean, I would make coach of the year just based on how bad this Eagles offense looks in the first year without him. And Jonathan Gaddon, they couldn't wait to run him out of town in Philly. Now they desperately want him back. Sean Desai, and then for whatever reason, Sirianni, who this decision alone should be fired for, promoting Matt Patricia to the play caller. That defense was bad. He somehow made it worse since his promotion. The coordinator hires have been awful by Sirianni this year. There is no faith in the team and the coaching staff. I mean, Jalen Hurts is the king of giving you nothing, good or bad, happy or sad. He says nothing. Yet over the last few weeks, there's reports and rumors and whispers about his frustration with the coaching staff and the game plan. There's player-only meetings uh, emphasizing we got to trust the coaching staff. Look, it all adds up. Sirianni has lost the locker room, and there is no getting it back. It's gone. He's got to go. If you're Philly, don't worry. I got your solution. It's Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel is the first guy you got to call and I think should bring in to replace Sirianni as head coach for 2024. Number one, he is perfect for Philly. And this is a guy who a few years ago said he would cut his penis off in order to win a Super Bowl. 
If that ain't Philly, I don't know what is. Personality-wise, he's a tremendous fit for the Eagles. He will absolutely have that defense turned around and playing fundamentally sound. I mean, he'll have them motivated. That's for damn sure. Also, fundamentals, uh, they would actually learn how to tackle. I mean, this has been a problem all season long, but reared its ugly head on Monday night. Do the Eagles know how to tackle? Like, like, do they think, like, it's flag football and we don't really have to take the guy to the ground? Because they're tackling. It's been dog shit all season long. It was awful again on Monday night. Vrabel, you know for damn sure, will come in there and clean it up. There will be no bad tackling on Mike Vrabel's watch. So he would come in instantaneously, I think, motivate and inspire the players, get this defense turned around, and you look at who he would bring in as offensive coordinator. Well, the last time, you know, this guy was not a head coach. Arthur Smith was Vrabel's OC in Tennessee. 2019, the year the Titans went to the AFC title game, that was a top 10 offense with Ryan Tannehill and not a good receiver whatsoever uh, out there for the Titans. So Smith, I know it did not go well in Atlanta, but when he's worked under Vrabel, has been a very good OC. I'll go on a limb here. I don't think Arthur Smith is getting a head coaching job this cycle. Bring him in as OC, that Vrabel-Smith head coach OC combo. Sounds pretty good to me. Sounds pretty damn good to me. There's a report out there tonight that Belichick has met with the Falcons and there's mutual interest in him filling their head coaching role. I know that's now going to be a popular name in Philly, along with Dallas, uh, for Belichick to be uh, to land him. If I'm Philly, why I would pump the brakes on Belichick is I got to know who his offensive coordinator is. Forget about developing a quarterback. His offensive coordinator hires have been very, very sketchy. Promoting Matt Patricia, there's reports that he wanted Matt Patricia despite the horrendousness we saw with their offense in 2022, tried to bring him back in 2023 before basically Robert Kraft forced him to hire Bill O'Brien. I don't want anything to, uh, to do with Josh McDaniels. So if I'm the Eagles, I'm pumping the brakes on Belichick because I w- would not trust who he brings in as offensive coordinator. Mike Vrabel, Arthur Smith, that is your answer to get the Eagles back on track in 2024. What an, I mean, it's honestly, with what we saw the last six weeks of the season, really last two months, a very fitting ending to the Eagles season. Lifeless, uninspired, fundamentally terrible football that couldn't get any sort of traction going offensively or defensively. The perfect fitting ending to the Eagles season in 2023. On the other side, I am so happy for Baker Mayfield. You talk about a guy who's deserved it. I could not be happier for Baker, who absolutely carved up that Eagles defense, was slinging the rock all over the yard. He was tremendous. And Baker showed you on Monday night, when he has competent and consistent coaching, He is bare minimum a playoff caliber quarterback. That's not going to hold you back in the postseason. I I don't know why that people did not look at the last two years and chalk it up to bad circumstances. It's not an excuse to say in 2021, he was hurt. He was. In 2022, he got to Carolina late. It's also Carolina with nothing around him, bad coaching. You go to LA and have a cup of coffee with Sean McVay. He never had any sort of familiarity. He was never able to dive into the playbook and have decent players around him and good coaching to get the most out of him. Is Baker Mayfield Superman? No. He needs help. But when he gets the proper help and just has some continuity, he's a damn good player. And so it's not a surprise that he was there all offseason in Tampa Bay with two really good receivers. It's not a surprise that Baker Mayfield had a career high in passing yards over 4,000 and passing touchdowns of 28 going into this playoff game. And then it's also not a surprise that he just ripped up a bad Eagles defense. The guy is good. It's not an excuse to look at what happened in 2021 and 2022 to say that it's, oh, injuries and bad coaching. That's reality. And Baker showed you tonight, but all season, that when there's just stability plus competency, This guy is a top 15 quarterback. 
He is a playoff caliber quarterback. And he's not going to get in your way when it comes to playoff success. He looked confident. He looked like Oklahoma Baker back again. Why is that? Because he's comfortable in the offense and he knows what he's doing. He's not guessing or sitting there thinking. I am so happy for Baker. His his free agent market is going to be buzzing. There's at least 10 teams I could think of right now that would call him and bring him in and feel good about their chances of competing for the playoffs, let alone the division next year. Baker is going to have a very busy offseason. He is so deserving, and I'm, I am so happy for Baker. Always been a Baker fan. Think uh, I thought he got screwed there at the end of his Browns tenure, and it goes to show you if he never got that shoulder injury, I thought he was poised for a big 2021 season with Cleveland, and who knows what we're talking about with the Browns. I think it's very, very safe to say Deshaun Watson, bare minimum, is not a Cleveland Brown if Baker does not get hurt in 2021. So happy for Baker. So happy that now he's found himself a home. And now he's found a lot of success. He is going, and the Bucks, of course, going to Detroit next week. I can't wait to see Baker play uh, in that game. Very, very happy for Baker. So Bucks advance. Baker's story continues. Sirianni, absolutely, and the rest of the staff should be fired now already. But they'll be fired soon. In the earlier game on Monday, Bills 31, Steelers 17. I want to start with what happened after the game first. Because post-game is where a lot of buzz was. Mike Tomlin, you'll see it here. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening, you'll hear the clip. Um, Hick and Night podcast, Night spelled N-I-T-E. If you're listening, you're about to hear what happened. But Mike Tomlin ended his press conference in a very on Mike Tomlin fashion. Take a look. Mike, you have a year left on your contract. That to me screams Mike Tomlin's gone. Here's why. One of the pillars Mike Tomlin has built this Steelers successful run on is eliminating distractions, right? Mike Tomlin does not provide bullet to board material. He is about his one of the modus operandi for him. I hope I use that phrase right. Um, one of the, the biggest things he always focuses on is eliminating distractions. Don't allow your own words or actions to take away from the task at hand, which is preparing for the opponent. And you know what Mike Tomlin did by storming off, by not answering the question? He has created a massive distraction. But I think he's also sending a message. Not only is he going against for the first time ever, going against what he despises, which is creating distractions. I think he's also sending a message that he's not only walking off the podium, I think he's walking away from the Steelers. There's been rumblings out of Pittsburgh that the Steelers won't fire him. Tomlin will instead walk away, resign. And I think that's what's going to happen here. There will be a, whatever you want to dress it up, mutual parting, Tomlin resigns. The, the, the window dressing is irrelevant. I think the fact is in 2024, there will be another head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers not named Mike Tomlin. The Tomlin era, I just think we saw, came to an end Monday afternoon in a snowy Buffalo. Tomlin, I think, is walking away. And him creating this massive distraction now is only the latest reason why I think that's happening. And you know what? If I'm right and Tomlin is gone, that's a good thing for the Steelers. Look, we could talk about, he's never had a, a losing record. Why would you want to get rid of him? Here's the reality with the Steelers. They have gotten stale. Right? The Steelers' standard is what? Super Bowls, right? Uh, last time I checked, that's still the goal for them. And so if your goal is to compete and win Super Bowls, how can you say Mike Tomlin is the best man for the job? Sure, he's never had a losing season, but being average, going 9-8, and 10-7, and seven, getting bounced in the first round of the playoffs, how can you say you're close to Super Bowl contention when that's been the story of the season the last, really, decade? They have not played well in the postseason at all. The last time you could truly say they were Super Bowl contenders 
It was back in 2010 when they made the big game and lost to the Packers. They have been nowhere close to the Super Bowl since that loss 13 years ago. An insane amount of time. But even in the years they've had good regular seasons, what do they do postseason time? Lay an egg, lose a game they shouldn't, and get bounced way earlier than they should. This Mike Tomlin team has gotten stale. I would say they are just an average team now going forward. And it's time for a shakeup. Nothing wrong with that. You don't have to be one of the worst teams in the league in order to fire your head coach. Sometimes it's, you know what? Yeah, we're still winning games and we're still having winning seasons, but we are nowhere close to the elite. And if we that's where we want to be, tough decisions have to be made. Nothing wrong with that. And so whether it's Tomlin walking away, however you want to dress it up, Tomlin not being on the sideline for the Steelers in 2024 is a very good start for them going in the right direction. Next is going to be quarterback. If you don't have a quarterback on your roster, it's not Kenny Pickett, not Mason Rudolph, it's not Mitch Trubisky, but one step at a time. Step number one is getting rid of Mike Tomlin. Step number two is finding a quarterback. And I think we are getting closer to that plan because I think Tomlin walking off the stage Walking off the finish off the post game press conference, storming out to me is a sign he is gone. All right, when it comes to the other side, the winning team, the Buffalo Bills, you win 31 17. This, though, despite the score looking like you dominated and controlled the game, this is not a game I think you can feel good about if you're the Bills going into next week. You did the Bills do this every single year, they are the kings of of letting bad teams hang around. And guess who's coming to town next week? Big, bad Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, I know. You are finally getting him on your turf in Buffalo. You're not going to Arrowhead. It's now Mahomes for the first time in his career going on the road in the playoff game. Big whoop. If you continue to allow the Chiefs like you, to hang around like you've done to every other postseason team you've played, really outside of the Patriots in 2021, you are going to lose. Like, if you think about it, I was thinking about this today because, again, this to me, this Steelers Bills game was so predictable. Bills win. Now, I thought the Steelers would cover, I was wrong, but the Steelers were in the game. It's 21 0. The game should have been over. The Steelers should not have been allowed to come out after halftime. But what do the Bills do? Blocked field goal, touch it right before the half. All of a sudden, the Steelers, who have no business being in this game, now have belief of, oh my God, we could we could make it a game. Coming out of the half, get a field goal, it's 21 to 10. The Bills let a bad Steelers team hang around way longer than they had any business being in that game. That's what Buffalo does. And if you look at it, it's different every time. Sometimes it's the offense that falters. Other times it's the defense that struggles. But if you look at the Josh Allen era right now, the Bills have played as a team one good playoff game. 2021 wild card against the Patriots where they embarrassed Belichick Blew Mac Jones out of the water. Defensively swarmed him. Offensively scored a touchdown. I felt like on every single drive. That was the only game where the Bills, well-rounded, played a really good overall playoff game. Again, other times it's the defense. Other times it's the offense. But more times than not, every game in the playoffs but one, Buffalo has had some area that's faltered. Some area that's not played well and some area that's allowed either a team that's not very good to hang around or a team that's on their level to beat them. And that's why I look at this game next week already. Chiefs coming to town. I don't care that it's in Orchard Park. The Bills can't put anyone away. And if you allow Patrick Mahomes to hang in it, even with a less talented Chiefs team than we've ever seen with bad wide receivers, I feel really damn good about Mahomes. I feel really good about Mahomes' chances of winning that game. Buffalo should be nervous. In part because the reason why they can't put teams away, why they allow them to hang around, is they can't run the football. 
The final stats look good. He was almost six yards per carry for the Bills on the ground. But if you take away, just for a second, I know it's a big play. You take away Josh Allen's 52-yard touch serve run. Incredible in the first half. The Bills, outside of that touchdown run, averaged 3.8 yards per carry on 33 carries. Not going to get the job done. That ain't going to get the job done. And that's why you see consistently the Bills in close games, whether it's against backup quarterbacks like Skylar Thompson against the, uh, the Dolphins last year, or allowing Mason Rudolph and the Steelers to have some breath of life. Offense, defense, special teams all find a way to allow bad teams to hang around and all find a way, for the most part, to lose the Bills a playoff game. Monday was no different. Bills got lucky to win that game. Should have been way, way more of a blowout than just winning by 14. If things don't, things don't change soon, Chiefs are going to go in there and let you know. Chiefs are going to go in there and let you know. And we'll discuss more throughout the week, but Buffalo loses that home to the Chiefs. I don't see Sean McDermott coming back. Again, that's a, we'll discuss more next week, but Shaw, I think McDermott is coaching for his job next Sunday night at home against the Chiefs. So again, a predictable, I think a predictable game for the Bills where they play well, can't put a bad team away. It's closer than it should be. Find a way to win. If I was a Buffalo fan, I would not feel good. Mahomes coming to town next week. If you like what you hear, subscribe to the channel right here if you're watching. Ryan Hickey on YouTube. Also, if you're more of an audio listener, check out to the podcast, Hick at Night Podcast, night spelled N-I-T-E. Check me out, CBS Sports Radio, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Saturday mornings, right there is where you can catch your boy.